these animals, and then I'll go over some rules on how best to feed them. Now, a common question that we get is, how do you tell the difference between a seal and a sea lion? Well, there are three easy ways to tell them apart. We do have four harbor seals in here, and the best way to tell them apart is actually if you look at their fur, you'll notice they come in all sorts of different colors. We have really light ones and really dark ones. They also have lots of different spots and freckles. Sea lions, however, are a solid brown color, and they don't have any markings at all. Another great way you can tell them apart is actually right now when they're swimming by you, you'll notice they're using their back flippers in a back and forth motion to propel themselves through the water. Sea lions, however, have very powerful front flippers that they use in an up and down motion, a lot like how the birds fly in the sky. Now, they also have the ability to rotate their rear flippers underneath their body so they can maneuver really well on land. Seals, however, have a fused hip bone, so their legs are permanently behind them. If they're walking on land, they look a lot like how a caterpillar looks when they hop around. Now, the final way you can tell them apart is if you look at their heads, it kind of looks like they don't have any ears. But they do have ears, they're just missing that external ear flap that sea lions have. But just because they don't have that ear flap doesn't mean they're not good at hearing. Both seals and sea lions have excellent hearing above and below the water. Alright, now I'm going to go to the difference between the two. I like to talk about my favorite subject, seals and their pups. Now, seal pups are born between the months of February and July, and the mothers will give birth to one per year. What's really cool about the babies when they're born is that they can be about 20 pounds, which is a really big baby, and they can also gain 100 pounds after nursing for only 30 days, and then they're totally on their own. So whether they're born on land or in the water, they are ready to swim with moms. Here at Miami Seaquarium, we have a very successful breeding program with these animals. In fact, in the last six years, we've had nine seal pups born. In the past seven years, we've had five sea lion pups born. We also have three generations of seals and sea lions living with us today, and it's all thanks to the amazing veterinary care, daily vitamins and supplements, and restaurant quality fish they receive every single day. They're also outliving their wild counterparts. In the wild, seals and sea lions are only living about to the 15 year mark. But here at the Miami Sea Aquarium, we have a sea lion that you might have seen in the show that's 26 years old. Another common question that we get is how do you train the animals to do the amazing behaviors that we see, especially in the show? Well, it's all using a method called positive reinforcement, which is essentially when the animal does something that we desire to see or something that we just like to see, we reinforce them. And then when they do something that we don't really desire to see, we simply ignore them. There's a lot of different ways that we can reinforce our animals. I think their favorite is usually their fish. But they also get a variety of different foods like plain gelatin, and they love ice cubes too. They love to play with their water hoses and misters and a variety of toys, but can't forget good old quality time with the trainers. Before they start training, however, our trainers and our sea lions and seals spend a lot of time getting to know each other and growing a really strong bond. Once they have that really strong bond formed, then they can start with some simple husbandry behaviors like a physical exam. This is a great way to keep track of their day-to-day -day health. They can learn some more advanced husbandry behaviors like a voluntary blood drop. That's just like if me or you were to go to the doctor today and hold still to get our blood taken. I think it's really cool that our animals get to take part in their own health care. Our trainers are with our animals 365 days a year and are on call 24-7. So if you have any questions about the animals you see here today, please feel to, uh, free to ask one of the trainers. They love to talk about the animals they take care of every single day. Alrighty, now that we've covered a little bit about these animals, if you have any more questions, feel free to ask me. But I think it's about time to go over the rules so I can open up our fish stand for you guys. So firstly, you'll notice the silver hand railing in front of you. Please be careful not to put anything past or below that silver hand railing. This includes your hands, any phones or maps, any dangling legs, 
please make sure they stay on your side of the silver handrail. Now if you do decide to feed our seals today, which I hope you do, they're pretty hungry, please remember to just drop the fish directly in front of their noses. Please don't attempt to hand feed or touch our seals. They can get our hands confused with the fish, so I don't want anyone to accidentally get bit. Now, please be careful of the birds in the area. These are wild animals, and they've become really good at stealing your fish. So please, when you get your tray, keep it covered at all times, up until the very point you want to throw the fish to the seals. Lastly, as a reminder, please be careful of the silver hand railing and don't put anything past it besides the fish you're about to buy. If anything does happen to fall into the water though, please let us know as soon as possible. If our seals eat anything other than fish, they can get really, really sick. So it's important to us that we retrieve anything from the water as soon as possible. And I think that about covers all of our rules. You guys look like rule followers to me. 